News for you, awesome websites without code. Here is the website we'll be creating. Here we have the header section with the logo and the menu, and the menu is linked to different sections on the website to create a one-page scrolling website. Here we have section one, then we have section two with about us and nutrition, and then we have section three, which is the recipes section. We have section four, which is the our blog section. We have section five, which is the clients section. And we have section six, which is the contact section with a Google map. And then we have the footer section right down here. So I'll scroll back up to the menu. And if I click on any of the menu items, it brings us to that section of the website. And in the footer section, we also have the menu, which can bring us to different sections of the website. I am currently viewing the website on a 27 inch iMac. Now let's see how the website looks on different width devices. So I'll just minimize the Google Chrome window here and we'll go to one of the testing tools we'll be using for this course. The testing tool is called sizzy.co or sizzy.co, so it's S-I-Z-Z-Y.co. And then I'll hit enter. And then right here we can see it says, welcome to sizzy, enter a URL to start. So here we'll enter the URL of the website. So if I go back to the website, the URL of the website is museforyoushop.com slash chef website. And I'll leave a link in the description area below so you can take a look as well. So I'll copy this link. So I'll highlight it. I'll hit Command C to copy. And then I'll go back to Sizzy or it's Control C if you're on Windows. And right here where it says enter a URL, I'll hit Command V to paste or Control V if you're on Windows. Then I'll hit enter. And here we have the website across different width devices. So we have an iPhone 4, iPhone 5, iPhone 6, and there's a few other devices below as well. So one of the things we notice immediately is that the menu has changed. If we go back to the desktop version of the website, we can see we have this horizontal menu. And if we go to the mobile version of the website, we have what's called a hamburger menu. And it's three lines. And if you click on it, we have a drop down menu. And this is so the menu fits on this device. And it also goes to the different sections of the website. And as we can see, the layout of the website has changed. All the, all the elements fit nicely down the middle. So this is an iPhone 4, and the width is 320 pixels by 480 pixels. The width is 320, and the height is 480. OK. And then we have an iPhone 5. Again, the layout has changed, and all the elements are going down the center of the website. We have an iPhone 6. All the elements are down the center of the website, of the device. And we have an iPhone 7 Plus. It's a bit wider. It's 414 pixels wide. And all the elements are down the center of the website. Then we have an iPad Air. It's a bit wider, it's 768 pixels wide. And again, it has the hamburger menu. And if we scroll, scroll down, the elements go nicely down the center of the website. And here we have the Nexus 6P. And again, everything is laid out down the center. Looks good. And if we scroll back up, you might notice that the title text here is a bit smaller. So on different devices or on different breakpoints, we can change the size of the text to fit that specific device. And then we have the Galaxy S4. It's at 360. The width of the device is 360 pixels. 
And again, everything is nicely centered uh, on the website to fit the device. So this is accomplished through what's called breakpoints in Adobe Muse. And I'm not gonna go over it too much in detail at this point because we're gonna go over it in this tutorial. But basically, every time we add a breakpoint, we can change the layout of the elements on the website. And the breakpoint values we're gonna be using can be found at the Google Resizer. So this is another testing tool we'll be using. So if I go to material.io, slash resizer, it'll bring us to the Google resizer. And these are the breakpoint values that Google uses. So if I go here on this icon, I click on the laptop icon, we can take a look at the different breakpoints that Google uses. So we have the 1600 breakpoint, the 1440 breakpoint. We're actually gonna skip this breakpoint for this website. We have the 1280 breakpoint, the 960 breakpoint, the 840 breakpoint, 600 and the 480 breakpoint. And we're also gonna add one more breakpoint right here at the 320 breakpoint to fit smaller devices like an iPhone 5S and an iPhone 4. So along with these breakpoint values and responsive pinning and using the scrubber tool, we're gonna to get a website that fits across any device. So responsive pinning is very important when making sure that the website is responsive across all breakpoints. Uh, these breakpoint values are just good stopping points to let you know if anything needs to be changed or reoriented on the website to fit a specific device. So these are the breakpoint values. So 1600, 1280, 960, 840, 600, 480, and we'll be adding a 320 breakpoint here as well. And don't worry if you don't understand anything about breakpoints at this point, that is all gonna be revealed as we go along in this tutorial. So now that we've gone over the website showcase, let's move on to the course outline. Muse for you, awesome websites without code.